they had basically one virtual guy yeah. who had four buildings to monitor, right? Really, and right. just talk to them over the computers and stuff. It was crazy. And they just had to sit there and just monitor all four screens? Basically, yeah. Look, I get it. The Toronto real estate market is confusing. Whether you're a new or experienced investor or just looking for a home to raise your family in, join us at Broadview Table Talks as you sit around the table with my friends and talk about the real estate and the ever-changing market in Toronto. All right, guys, welcome to another edition of Broadview Table Talks. I'm here with my friend and, uh, I guess, new client, Derek Wu. What's up? Um, uh, thanks for having me on the show. Thanks for coming um, doing this. Just recently moved here to Toronto full-time. As you know, I've been coming back and forth for uh, about two and a half years and uh, decided it was time to lay a foundation here in, from? in, from Montreal. All right. from Montreal. Okay, and? It's a, it's a very different city. It's, it's much larger than Montreal from, uh, I guess, a... Uh, from how, how big the city is, but the people are different as well. And um, it's very corporate here. Yeah. Uh, and the housing uh, market is just, uh, it's totally different. It's completely different. So for what you got here, what would yeah. that, like how much more does that cost here? Like multiple? How much, or, yeah, how much double, more triple? in Montreal? Yeah. No, here, compared to oh. Montreal. How, how much less could you get that for? So at the place we bought here in Toronto, probably would have cost 700,000 in Montreal. Right. Around if we were looking at the same type of area, the, t uh, the neighborhood, it'd probably be around seven, 750. Uh, and here we negotiated to just above a million, but it was initially listed, as you know, at, at 1.2. Yeah. So we waited a little bit. We knew how many days it was on the market and we decided to wait and then it dropped to, uh, uh, I think 1080, 1.1,880. Uh, yeah. I came in with some low ball offer. <laughs> Well, that's when, did, yeah, you know it. Well, we knew what the last one sold for, so yeah, we, we went exactly. just a little under that. So it worked out. Good timing. Yeah, worked out. But we'd already looked at another one, which was a a major kerfuffle in terms of you know uh, the process and getting re you know having to to turn down that offer at the at, at the eleventh hour. So that was quite a. I don't know if you want to talk about that, but that was a, quite a kerfuffle, and we didn't. Uh, we were kind of uh, discouraged after what happened there. All right. So tell the listeners what the difference is between Montreal and Toronto, like lifestyle, like why you chose here versus over there, you know, instead of bringing Mandy over there, why'd you uh, come here? Yeah. Like, uh, so Mandy doesn't, she doesn't speak French. So in her position uh, to be in that, at that same level in, in Quebec, I think uh, you have to have a very strong uh, French presence or a very strong uh, knowledge of the language, not only speaking it, but also reading and writing and comprehension, I think is very important. Coming here, I just, I just, I've always wanted to, to be, more in the corporate world here in Toronto since I was, you know, after I graduated university, I, I knew that one day that if I wanted to uh, get on the right trajectory in, in my career that I had to be in Toronto. And, and now I'm here and I made that decision to come here and to settle here and, and to buy here. And uh, yeah, in meeting you, that, that all happened. That's amazing. So you think it's worth the premium to be here? Yeah, I think the difference, and to answer your question, what the difference is between Montreal and Toronto real estate is if I, I think if you buy something here in Toronto, the length of time in which it you know, um, goes up in value that it, it goes up in value a lot more and in a lot quicker time span, uh, as opposed to Montreal, you buy something, you have to wait for it to get to that level where you feel like it's okay. Now it's maybe time to sell or maybe made the right investment. There's some time it takes until you realize that. Whereas in Toronto, I feel like you get that realization fairly quickly. The appreciation you mean? Yeah. Appreciation. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, um, you have a couple of investment properties in Montreal. Yeah. Yeah. And how's that been going? You know, being a landlord isn't easy. You're going to run, as you know, you're going to run into issues with, with tenants. You're going to run into issues with the building. You're going to run into issues with quality of materials. You know, I've owned upwards of five, six properties in Montreal in the span of six years. And now I'm down to a few properties and there still is a, a lot of work to be done. And there's issues with tenants and there's issues with uh, upkeep and, and management and you know, condo boards and, and the builders. So there's... It's been it's been going well, but you know it's it it it's a hassle sometimes for sure. Oh, it's like that everywhere though. Right? Absolutely, I'm talking about the I guess the the, the yields, the, the returns, the appreciation yeah. that you're seeing. So, like I said, the yields uh, you don't get those realizations as quickly as you would in Toronto. I feel yeah. like I know people bought uh, during the pandemic here, like say down by the water by the harbor front, and they bought maybe a 1,300 square foot condo for like 600 thousand. I guess you know how here? much in the harbor front pre pre COVID. Here. Yes, Toronto. Toronto. Pre, pre COVID, six fifty, seven hundred thousand dollars pre build, pre construction. Oh, you're talking about like way back when. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Like before COVID, like I think two thousand seventeen, two thousand eighteen. Oh, okay. oh, yeah. It's different, man. Yeah, yeah, you can't compare. And now it's double. Yeah. So, so in the, in the past little while, like doubles pretty much every seven years or less. Actually, maybe right. six seven years, right? But that's not to say that it's going to continue on that way in the future. But no, in the past, no. it has. Yeah, you're for right. Sure. 
I feel comfortable with the investment we've made here. And, you know, our goal is to, you know, perhaps buy another property in two years. And, you know, we took a, we took a two year fixed mortgage rate to, to, to kind of wait it out a bit and, and kind of hopefully, you know, those interest rates go down and I'm not sure how far they go down. I would think maybe by then, maybe a five year fixed rate at one of the top six banks would be hopefully maybe four, just above 4%. I've I don't seen know. that now. Yeah. Five years fixed at yeah. four, six, four. At the big six. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. even maybe even more then. Hopefully we'll see. That'd be great. Yeah. That'd be great. For yeah. Sure. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. So, okay. So you bought something here. Um, yeah. You're hoping it'll appreciate, but I guess the reason why properties appreciate faster here is because there's more people here, right? There's 6 million people in the greater Toronto area, like three or 4 million in the core. Yeah. Right. And um, it's just where all the jobs are. You know, I heard a stat that above a third, just about a third of yeah. the immigrants come to Canada uh, from Canada, come to Toronto. End up in yes. Toronto. So. I, I watched you say that in another uh, podcast, actually. Yeah. 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 So I think that, you know, all the jobs are here at the end of the day, right? Like, look how easy it was for you to find a job as well. I wouldn't say it was easy. Um, I think I was just at the right place at the right time and, you know, talking to the right people. I mean, I think this is what how things kind of work, right? Right. So I, I wouldn't say it was easy. It was just I was at the right place at the right time. Yeah? Yeah, I think so. I, but would it be easier than Montreal? To get the same type of job yeah, in Montreal, yeah, like uh, opportunities there, or you like, yeah, there's there's also a lot of opportunity in Montreal as well. Mm -hmm. But I think to to get on the right trajectory for myself personally, um, I think I had to be in Ontario yeah. for that to happen. To be in Toronto, yeah, uh, for to sure. be in this this world to kind of to get to that level, I feel. You know, I haven't been in Montreal for a couple of years now, but I really love the culture and the entertainment right. and the food and just the art and everything. Just yeah, different lifestyle. I think. Listen, I've been there 21 years and. Uh, there are a lot of good restaurants here in Toronto. You know, I think it's just a, uh, it's a different lifestyle. I've lived that life for 21 years and I think it's uh, time to do something different and, and be in this new uh, environment. And I think it, it works for me at this time in my life. Yeah. yeah. As you're building, right? As, As I'm building. Feel. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I think over there, everyone just focuses more on entertainment and enjoyment. I don't know. Correct me if I'm wrong. Right. Yeah. But I think that's, uh, I think that's perception. People work hard, play hard. Yeah. That's, that's the Montreal life, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. I missed it. I loved it there. It was cool. Yeah. I mean, I miss it too. The fashion's nice. And yeah, yeah. I'm trying to bring up a little bit of the fashion to, uh, to Toronto now. So, uh, <laughs> nice, nice. Oh yeah. Well, what's next for you then? What else after this? So we just got the new job, got the new house, pretty much moved in. Yeah. I girlfriend. Think, what's the next thing? I think it's, uh, I signed up for competitive volleyball Nice here in Toronto. And I honestly haven't hit a, a volleyball in like 15 years. Okay. So come Monday, uh, I might be laughed off that volleyball court. I'm not sure. Um, oh, you haven't played yet? No, our first game is on, uh, the teams just got established today, actually. Nice. And it starts Monday. Nice. So I'm looking forward to, to embarrassing myself and <laughs> on Monday. And let's see, maybe uh, maybe I'll, uh, I'll quit. I don't know. Well, tell me this. So you're going to have to drive everywhere, right? And you're thinking about getting rid of your car. Yeah, I mean, uh, Toronto is just, you can get everywhere by subway. Um, I've always had a car. So I've had a car since I graduated. Mm -hmm. So, and a lot of people said, that's nuts. I mean, we don't, we don't Derek Wu without a car is not Derek Wu. <laughs> and Derek Wu with that. Yeah. And Derek Wu with a car that's not a German car is not Derek Wu. Yeah, so yeah. yeah, I just feel like, um, I feel like we don't need a car, but we don't, you know, in, in our building, city. in our yeah. building, as you know, there's Tesla's that are available to rent by the hour, by the hour and e-bikes and, e and scooters. Which is freaking cool. You can rent scooters, right? Am I wrong? Yeah, we're, we're going to buy scooters. Yeah. But you can rent scooters in, in the building, There's right? also e-scooters. That's crazy. So there was a big mess up a couple weeks ago when I rented those Teslas. I don't know if I told you the story, oh, yeah. but um, so I tried to rent one of these Teslas downstairs because um, uh, we were in a bit of a rush and we wanted to try and rent this Tesla. So we got on the app and as I was starting the ride and, and trying to unlock the vehicle, I was getting all these text messages in, 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 on my phone, but I, I couldn't see them because I was in the app. So I got all frustrated because I was in a rush. I decided, you know what? Forget taking this Tesla. Let's just hop in the car and, and go to the bank. So we, we took my car um, and we went four kilometers in my car. Um, but my phone still had the trip going. Oh. So the trip had not ended. The phone was still on and it thought that I was in the Tesla. So when oh. I got out of the vehicle, three kilometers, four kilometers later, I got charged a wrong drop-off fee for the Tesla because it thought I was four kilometers away and it charged me the, uh, how many minutes I was driving oh, the, the vehicle for. Oh, but nice. the Tesla never left the original location, right? It was still. So it's based on your app. 
it's based on where my phone is. It's based on my, the phone being with me. Oh. So I called them and, you know, it was all sorted out, but that's a big technology mishap. It's kind of glitchy. Yeah, it is glitchy. It's not even a glitch. It's just, bad they're not tracking, <laughs> they're not tracking the car. Right. They're tracking your phone. That's a bad design. So I had a call with them saying, uh, they said they really appreciated my feedback, but I'm not really sure what that means, honestly. Right. So they want to hire you. Maybe <laughs> I hope not. I'm not yeah. taking that car again, actually. Really? So, yeah. So I, I, I missed the text message which told me, uh, gave me the pin code for the uh, the lock that was actually behind the car, screwed into the concrete wall. Oh, So there's a weird. lock there, you put in the code, the key card comes out for the Tesla, you can get in. I me, mean, I've never driven a Tesla before, so I had no idea that, you know, you had to take this key card, you had to swipe it on the door, yeah. get in the car driveway, and, and come back. I mean, uh, so I got charged uh, over $300. What? Uh, for the drop-off, wrong drop-off location. What? 250 plus $53 for the time I was using it. Okay, that's ridiculous. But anyway, the idea is pretty cool. So if you know yeah. how to use it and it works out well, it's actually a pretty good idea. Like you pay a hourly fee it, or whatever. It, it, I think it's about twenty cents, uh, twenty cents a, a minute, mm. fifteen cents a minute or something like that. So it works out to be twelve dollars an hour, something like that. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's not bad. Great so you can go carless. You save whatever your car payment is. Oh, yeah, you save your insurance. You save the parking spot. That could be easily like a mortgage. And insurance in insurance in Toronto is, is quite higher, right? Yeah. So I, I mean, I don't. Is know it really more than Quebec? Because Quebec is fifty percent more. So when I signed up for the insurance a few weeks ago, it was a uh, fifty percent more a month on the premium. And what I didn't know is every licensed driver in your household has to be on the policy. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, Mandy had you know a couple tickets. Right. Uh, you know, in the last couple of years. So that affected the premium, right? But she's not going to be driving the car. She doesn't even have a car anymore. So every licensed driver in your household has to be on that insurance policy. Right. So that affected my premium, not significantly, but, you know, it's just nice to know, you know, being from Quebec, you know, that doesn't, uh, that isn't the same case, right? So yeah, that was quite, uh, quite strange for me. Well, hopefully that won't be a problem if you rent uh, rent the car by the minute, right? By the hour. Yeah, so, for sure not. Yeah, uh, you save. No, I'm talking about I'm talking about my personal vehicle. That's what I mean, yeah, right? Okay, if yeah. you if you go rent the the Teslas underground and not have to worry about getting a car because you're you're right by the subway, which is pretty cool. Right, right. And right? It's only seven eight stops to to Union Station where I get off, so it's uh, it's quite convenient actually. And then you're you're in one of those newer buildings, which is pretty cool. So it's all teched out. That's cool. It's so all tell everybody down. about like how you get into the unit and stuff, like what the cool yeah. features are. So some of the cool features are face recognition. So as soon as you come through the main entrance, you can click face recognition on the console and it scans your face and the door opens. You don't have to bring your key anywhere. You, you have know? to touch something though, right? Sorry? You have to touch something or it's just... With the uh, face recognition? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you have to touch face recognition on the console. Uh-huh. But it basically scans your face and lets you through your face lets you through the main entrance. That's cool. And then everything else in the building is uh, use your phone. It's all tap. It's like when you tap t- tap to pay using your Visa or, or your debit card. Everything in the building uses your phone. Your door to your condo, uh, access to the gym, uh, the pool, the garage. And on the app, you can open the garage for somebody. You can open the front door for somebody That's from anywhere cool. in the world. You can Very control guess. the temperature in your home from anywhere. And those are some of the cool features. And you can even invite guests to use. Uh, you can invite guests using a code. So you send them a text message. They come through the main entrance. They just reply to the text message you sent them with a certain code. They hit send and the door opens. And That's cool. you can give them one day access, two day access, three day access. So they can have access to the pool in the summer with you. So that's your front door uh, of the building? Just the front door and, the main, and the, just the main entrance. And your unit door as well? Or no, no, just no. the main entrance. Okay, but your unit door, you have a key access or something, right? Like you have a fob. We can have, we can, you can oh. use the phone. You can have a fob. That's I cool. personally don't carry the fob just anywhere. Phone. Just on my phone. And also with packages too. So... When you receive a package, they put it in one of the lockers downstairs. If it's a if it's a bigger package, it goes in the parcel room. Yeah. But you get a notification on your phone with a QR code saying your parcel is here in the lockers, or it's in the parcel room. You scan the QR code at the parcel room door or at the locker area on the screen, and that compartment automatically opens. You get your package, or you go to the parcel room. You pick up your package. Everything's controlled uh, by the app, and you don't have to see anybody. Like no concierge, nothing. It just does on its own. Yeah. It, so awesome. for packages that are signature required, yeah, the concierge will sign for them, and they will put it in the parcel room. Sure. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And then also your driver's license plate. Like if you have a front plate when it goes down the garage. Yeah. So when you when you so I think that's all tried out buildings, right? So yeah. as soon as you go through the garage or you're in front of the garage, yeah. it scans your license plate, and the door will open. But you know, as you know, I'm from Quebec. And we don't have a front driver's license plate. And 
Um, so they gave me a, a sensor card and I just put it on the, on my window, uh, where the review mirrors and just, it just scans it when I, when I pull through the, uh, when I pull through into the garage. That's super cool. You know, there's not a lot of buildings in the city that are like that, right? Really? A lot of them are older. So only, right. yeah, Tridel started doing that recently. Yeah. There's a couple other buildings that do, but for the most part, I think Tridel is one of the more advanced ones. They yeah. played with something where they had a virtual concierge. Pretty really? Cool. They, they, they stopped it though, but they had basically one virtual guy yeah. who had four buildings to monitor, right? Really, and right. just talk to them over the computers and stuff. It was crazy. And they just had to sit there and just monitor all four screens? Basically, yeah. So you save 24 7. For the cost. So th that actually affects your maintenance fees, right? Because right. you're doing less for concierge. Because right. concierge is like, it's a pretty expensive contract, right? Yeah. So, um, like two, three hundred thousand a year, depending on the size of the building, yeah. right? But if you had a virtual one that can handle four buildings, it's like a potentially a quarter of the cost, right? Which is huge. Absolutely. So you'd have somebody just like you know for buzzing and stuff, you'd come up on screen, they'd talk to you. It's pretty cool. So they don't have that but anymore. I, I don't think they did. I don't think it really went worked well because I think you still have to do patrols and stuff like that, right? So I don't think they. Yeah. Uh, well. Our building is. Uh, we've got another security guy now uh, patrolling the building. But uh, it's been pretty good so far. Just some minor instances here and there in the building, but nothing, uh, nothing crazy. Right, right. I mean, so if you compare it to like your old building that you were at before, right? Yeah. And they don't have any of that stuff. Not even close to it. So in Montreal, the majority of new condos coming up don't have concierge. Right. So they don't have concierge. That can lead to several problems like stolen packages, security issues, homeless people uh, staying in in the front entrance, Airbnbs, uh, Airbnbs, uh, too many people on the rooftop. Right. But, you know, what I found here that's different is that all the underground parking in Toronto is not heated. Right. Most of the underground parking garages in Montreal for new condos, they're all heated. Right. Which, you know. It's kind of a waste of utilities, though, right? Because you have to have ventilation shafts. So it's yes. basically open up in all parts of the corners of the building. They will automatically open at certain times to ventilate out for sure. Right. But no, yeah. but actually our buildings here are always open. For oh, the really? most part, I think yeah. they're always open. And there's a fan that runs and circulates air and right. stuff like that. So if you're heating all the time, all that, you're just basically heating outside. So I think it's kind of. I, waste, I don't know what personally. they do with the heat. Maybe they maybe they flow it back into the building and heat the corridors. I, I have no idea. Yeah. They must make some efficient use of it. I mean, that's something that uh, we should look into. Maybe. Well, I mean, until until all cars are electric and there's no more combustion cars, then right. you still need to ventilate it, right? Like you right. need to. That's um, not happening for a while, right? Not, there's there's a mandate for that in the, what it's 2035 happen, or something. Man. It's gonna be it's logistically so impossible. Yeah. It's so impossible to do that. Like, right. I don't know how it's gonna work. There's gonna be exceptions and stuff, but I'm sure eventually over time it'll change. I'm yeah. sure. But uh, yeah, no, that's cool. So I think all the technology you have in your building, you're taking for granted, man, because a lot of things, a lot of buildings don't have that. Yeah. And, and another thing is that, you know, internet's included, right? In the condo nice. fees, which is, which is great. Nice. Good, really high speeds, but it only services Rogers. I think they have an exclusive contract. I, I guess until the new board is formed, I guess that's the only um, provider that's allowed in the building. Yeah, well, yeah, I, I think a pr you have to approach a provider to run a cable into the DMARC room and then from there right. you can go up, right? So well, listen, it's one gig down, one gig up. I think it's, uh, I think it's, super fast. Right. 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 So. Cool. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's good to see some differences between Toronto yeah. and Montreal. Yeah. And uh, hopefully enjoy your time here. Thank you. If people want to reach out to you, what do they, how do they do that? Send me an email, Derek J Wu at hotmail.com. That's D E R E K J W U at hotmail.com. Okay, man. Thanks for joining me. Thanks Ken. All right. <laughs> All right. Add it up. Thanks for sticking out to the very end. I hope you got some value out of this. Do me a favor, please press like and subscribe, but more than anything, leave me some feedback so we know what to produce for you going forward. Thanks again.